Let's go ahead and look at, uh, I want to show you this one, the 3D frequency analysis. This is really awesome. This shows us a 3D image of the song. So I can grab this wheel and spin it. Now notice it says 20 hertz to 20 hertz, 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So as I spin this, I can get a 3D version of what my song looks like. Again, what you're going to want to do if you're mastering, especially if you're starting out, but I know a lot of mastering engineers that do this too, they use reference tracks. It's very difficult for your brain to remember how a song should, should sound. You don't know like if you had a rough day, maybe you're riding the subway, maybe you were out late last night, maybe you have a cold. You know, there's any number of variables that could change your perception. I mean, ideally when you walk into a mastering studio, if you think about it, they're usually sitting in front of $100,000 worth of outboard analog and digital gear. Most of them are connected to some sort of uh, computer with this type of metering, but the room itself has been acoustically treated. There's, there's, you know, everything has been time aligned. The speakers are decoupled from the room, the walls, there's no parallel walls. Like all this comes into play when you come into a mastering suite. If you open this for the first time and you're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, I can see that, you know, there's my frequency range and I can see the, the bulk is the low end, but that's also how we hear. It's that, that, uh, the lower frequencies are more prominent. They need to be because we don't hear them as well. You think about it, like when we communicate, we're in that, in that sort of mid-range. So that's where our ears are most sensitive. So since this is more of a dance track, a dance tune, this is, it's, that's the reason why it's got such a big uh, push towards the low end. But a lot of music has that, even rock. You'll find like the bass and the kick will, will have a prominent low end. It kind of has to, otherwise we don't hear it. So that's what's going on there. Again, I would probably be using a reference track, or should be using a reference track, to compare uh, the 3D analysis with my own track, that kind of thing. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the loudness distribution. This will tell you sort of an overall average loudness. Remember it was told us that it was at uh, about minus 12. You can also look at it in terms of the right and the left. You can kind of see which, which, uh, which side is louder than the other if they're exactly the same. You can also change the range, so if you change your dynamic range and really look at it, you can kind of get in and see what's going on there as well. Again, these are just meters allowing you to... to